Hello guys, it's Unders, and today I'm just going to have a little talk about X noise from Waves, what it does, how we can use it, why it's super useful. So X noise is part of the noise restoration uh, bundle, and what we can essentially do with this is reduce noise, sort of like a pink noise, white noise type profile, things like tape hiss from recordings. Really useful when sampling if you want to make a sample sound a little bit more pristine and kind of like reverse the process. Waves does have a newer version of this, however the X noise and the restoration bundle are often on offer and I still make use of these quite regularly when having to do some kind of audio restoration projects. Um, for example, people's like wedding recordings and things like that. So what I've got here is an example. I've got a drum loop that has got some tape here, some vinyl crackle on it. And while it sounds good, that uh, like hiss and crackle might just become a little bit too much and we might just want to go for a little bit of a cleaner sound. We can use X noise to help us with that because there's definitely that sort of tape hiss, that constant noise in there and we can use it to remove that. So there's a couple of parameters we need to really look at. We've got our threshold, then we've got reduction. And down the side for the dynamics, we've got attack and release, really similar to a compressor. So it's how quick it's going to reduce that sound away. And when it is no longer passing that threshold, it's the length of time it takes before the hiss or noise would return. Uh, we've then got a high shelf, and this is basically... Um, like adding the gain back in that can be lost from uh, this type of processing. So we might lose a little bit of the high end and we can use the high shelf just to bring it back in a little bit and try and get the sound the same. Across the bottom, we've got a resolution, low, medium and high. You can think of this kind of like oversampling, um, really similar. I'm not going to go into the whole shebang of how it works. Uh, if you really want, you can dig into the manual for that. But high, medium and low, have a listen to them. In this case, I found high is working best for us. We've then got our little metering in the middle here. And as you can see, uh, white gives us profile, red is an input and green is our output. And we've got frequency across the bottom, left to right, and then volume bottom to top on the right hand side here with zero dB up at the upper echelons here. I've then got a nice little output meter and a really useful one. We've got this audio and difference. Difference means it will only play what's being removed so you can check you're not affecting your sound too much. I'm just going to set this real quick to try and remove some of that hiss and then we'll talk about how it works. Actually, I think now using mid on the resolution with a little bit of the high shelf has helped us out a bit there. So hopefully you can hear a difference. Let me just A-B them for you. First, I'll have X noise turned off and we'll listen to the sound. Once it loops around, we've done the whole four bars. I'm going to introduce X noise again and you should hear that that hiss disappears. And there's going to be some artifacts going in our sound without a doubt. And we can really spend some time fine tuning that. But this should give you an idea of the effect that has been removed. we can maybe correct it with a bit more extreme push on the high shelf. What I would probably look to do here though is EQ after the fact at this point. So 
So what's actually going on is the threshold here. You can see the signal passes this white threshold. And when it does that, the X noise takes effect and it's removing those noises. They're mainly up in the higher frequency. And you can see the resulting output. So based on this threshold is where the effect starts taking place. If we put the threshold right up, it removes almost everything. If we bring it quite down, it will barely affect the sound at all. Now you can think of reduction a little bit like a ratio in the compressor. This is going to be the amount of reduction that occurs based on the threshold. So if I was to put this up to 100, even with our mediocre threshold here, it will still pull lots of it out. Now there we're still getting some really high frequency crackle. So we would maybe even go with the 100% the reduction and gradually change the threshold. And surprisingly, there's working quite nicely for us. If we listen to the difference, we can now hear what's being removed. Pretty useful. Now for this type of sound, I'd imagine this has been like a, a maybe a tape recording come off of vinyl or it's been faked and it was initially a clean recording and it's been dirtied up and they've added artificial tape here, some vinyl crackle. So what we could do is we could also introduce X crackle before the noise reduction here. And this works on a similar principle, but it's taking out a different area of the sound. And we could just try and remove some of the crackle beforehand. So here we've just got the different set. And we've really cleaned that up quite well. There's still a little bit of hiss going on and we'd look to definitely adjust the sound a little bit with an EQ, but if we go from clean to, we go from the original to having the plugins engaged. The sound has definitely been cleaned up a lot. Um, I find these really, really useful for speeches, vocal recordings. Um, sometimes when I'm doing this type of type of video, uh, there'll be some noise in the background and things like uh, if a hard drive spins up and I don't hear it with my headphones on, X noise can help me remove that sound. Really, really useful. There's just some good plugins to play around with, especially if you're sampling and you want to sort of get away from uh, having noisy samples. You really like the vibe of it, but it's just too noisy to use. Clean it up first. Um, I hope that was helpful for you guys and I will see you on the next one.